Welcome back to Linux Zero to Hero. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the command line of Linux, which is one of the most fundamental things in Linux. And I heard from a lot of people that last video was a little not beginner friendly. I promise you that this one will be. The only required knowledge for this video will be to simply have Linux. That's it. If there's probably one thing in Linux that you absolutely must know how to use, it is indeed the command line. So let's get started. Welcome to the command line. From here on out, we're actually going to be referring to this as the terminal because that's going to be the program that we're going to use to actually input the commands into. I use a pretty basic terminal. This is just the terminal that's built into my Linux distribution, which is, which is Xubuntu. There's tons of different terminals out there. If you have a Linux system, you 100% for sure have a terminal. And to access it, go to your applications menu and just do a search for terminal. However, despite what it might be called or what it might look like, they all do exactly the same thing. They give you an opportunity to type commands and run them. What you actually see when you open your terminal is going to be based on which terminal you use and the configuration of your profile. But for me, I'm going to see this line right here. And this is broken down into the name of the user, the name of my computer, and then the name of the directory that I'm currently in. And like everything else in Linux, this is fully customizable, but that's going to be outside of the scope of this video. So now we're going to be looking at some commands. The very basic way a command works is you type the name of the command. So I'll do like ls, you click enter, and then it gives you some output. We'll be looking at a bunch of commands in this video, but this particular one that I just ran is ls, and its whole purpose in life is just to list out the files in the current directory that you're in. Now, it could be possible that you learn a brand new command and you don't know the full extent of how that command works. On Linux, fortunately, we have these things called man pages, and to access the man page of a particular command, all you type is man, then the command. What you're seeing here is the actual man page for ls. You can navigate up and down using your page down and page up keys to see the full details of this command called ls. In the synopsis section of a command, it'll tell you exactly how to use this. So usually when you see square brackets, this means something is optional. So what this is saying is optionally provide one or more options and then optionally provide one or more files. And since both of these are completely optional, we can just type ls and click enter. And don't worry, we'll be doing some practice on some commands using these different options later. Once you're done reading a man page, simply click Q, and that will bring you back to the terminal. And so now let's run a command with some actual options. So there's two parts to every command. There's the command itself, that's going to be ls, and then when you press space, then you can supply the options for that command. Generally speaking, options will change how a command functions. So one such option for ls is something called dash l. And what this does is this causes ls to show you a list of everything in a directory. Most core Linux commands are very comprehensive. So if the command you're using is not doing what you want it to, you probably just have to find the right option to make it work. Now, more than just options can be supplied to commands. You can also supply files. So there's one such command called cat. And what cat does is it takes a supplied file and outputs it to the screen. So if I want to show what is in notice.txt, I can do cat type notice.txt, hit enter, and it shows me what's inside that file. Now some commands let you supply both options such as dash L and then options such as a file. So don't be surprised if you were to see that as well. There's also a few other basic commands that we can do. So for things like Brian, Helix, and Sample, which is the folder we're in, we can also get those through other commands. So if you want to know who you are, you can type, who am I? And I'll tell you Brian. You can also type hostname, that'll list the hostname, and you can type pwd, which stands for print working directory, and that will tell you the directory that you're currently in. And this next part we're gonna be going into is directories and files. The next thing we're gonna look at is navigating around different directories using commands. So for people who might be coming from Windows, you can think of this first slash here as being roughly equivalent to C colon backslash. In Linux, we refer to this as the root directory. So currently we are in slash home slash Brian slash sample. And if you are ever unclear as to what folder you're in, you can always type PWD, hit enter, and it'll tell you where you are. In this directory, I have several files and directories. All the ones in blue, which also contain a D, all the way to the left here, these are all directories. The rest of them are files. If you want to navigate to a different directory, we can use a command called CD for change directory, and then supply the name of the directory you want to navigate to as an option, and hit enter. So now I'm in the bin directory. We can confirm this by typing pwd, hit enter. You can see now we're in slash home slash Brian slash sample slash bin. I'm gonna do clear to clear the terminal and then ls-l to see everything in the bin directory. 
and you could just keep navigating further from here. Now the one nice thing is that you can use the tab key to autocomplete directories and files. So say I wanted to navigate to the clang folder. I can do cd cl and then I can just hit tab and it will just fill it in for me. So now I've navigated pretty deep into these directories, but what if I want to go backwards? So the nice thing in Linux is there is a couple special folders that we can do by doing ls-la. It's a directory called dot and a directory called dot dot. You can think of the dot as referring to the current directory, and you can think of the dot dot as referring to the directory one level up. So what this means is if you want to go backwards from home Brian sample bin clang, you could do cd dot dot. You can see now I'm in slash home Brian sample bin. I can even go back further to get myself back to where I originally was, cd dot dot again, and now I'm in home Brian sample. Now you don't have to navigate around one directory at a time, that's not necessary. If I want to go back to bin clang, I can do cd bin tab clang tab and hit enter. And then the same is true for going backwards. I can do cd dot dot slash dot dot and this will bring me back to directories. The other way I can navigate to directories is I can just navigate directly there using what's called an absolute path. So if I do cd, I can then double click this here to highlight it. I can use my middle mouse button to paste it and then hit enter and that just takes me directly to that path, which can be confirmed by running pwd. It's probably important to mention at this point that control C and control V like you might use in Windows and other places on Linux do not really work in the terminal. The way you copy and paste things in the terminal is you highlight the thing you want to uh, copy and then you hit middle mouse button to paste it. The last thing we're going to talk about for directories is creating and deleting. To create a directory, you're going to use the command mkdir and then specify the name of the directory you want to make. So we'll just do like new dir. We'll do ls-l and then we can see the new directory here. Now to remove that directory is going to be rmdir. Specify the directory. So I'm going to do new underscore then just hit tab just to auto-complete it. Do ls-l and you can see it's gone now. Now keep in mind that rmdir will not delete directories that actually have stuff in it. So if I do ls-l and then specify bin, it'll list out all of the files inside the bin directory. And you can see that there is stuff there. So if I do rmdir bin, you can see it says fail to remove bin, directory not empty. To delete a non-empty directory, we'll have to use a command called rm, and we'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about files. So when you're navigating around a Linux system fast, you're gonna notice you're gonna use cd and ls-l a lot. So like, you know, I do c.bin, ls-l, cd clang, ls-l, go back, check it again. Okay, cd, ldb, ls-l, cd android, and you just keep going from there. If you wanna practice navigating around and messing with files, a good place to start is actually your home directory. That's gonna be the one that's created when your user is created, and you can access it by just doing CD and providing nothing else. You can see now when I do PWD, I'm at slash home slash Brian. This would be my home directory. So my directory here, now we're gonna talk about files. I'm gonna create a new directory just for me to work in. So I'll do mkdir uh, temp, maybe, cd temp, and now I'm in an empty directory. If I wanted to just create an empty file, I can use a command called touch and then specify the name of the file as an option. So we'll call it notes.txt. Now, if I want to put some contents in this file, there's a couple ways I can do it. I can use a terminal editor, such as like nano or vim. So I can type nano notes and hit enter. Now I have a place where I can type some things. Now how exactly the editor works is gonna be based on what editor it actually is. What editor you use is based entirely on preference and I like nano for quick things. So in here I'm going to type, you know, this is my new file and I can write whatever I want in it. For nano, the way in which you save a file is do control X and then you click Y for yes and then the file name to write, you click enter. Now I can confirm that it is indeed changed. Do you remember the command we used before? It's cat notes and you can see it shows the contents of the file. Now if the command line text editor is a little too crazy for you, you can also open up a, a graphical one. So I have a program on my computer called Kate, and that allows me to edit files. So this is also gonna be the first thing you're gonna see where you can actually open up graphical programs from the terminal. So if I do Kate and I supply notes, you can see that it's going to open me up a, uh, an actual graphical editor here. 
Now this may look like it's actually in the terminal, but it, it's actually a real program that's open on my computer. I could move it to any different monitor that I wanted to. And then this works the same as any other editor. You can just, you know, add new things here, you know, control S for save or whatever the thing for the program is, and then you're good to go. Now you might've noticed in your terminal, you can't actually use it right now. And that's because the terminal is being used to show you this program called Kate. So once you close it though, then it'll give you access to the terminal back to start typing things again. Next, we're gonna talk about renaming, copying, and deleting files. So if you want to rename a file, you actually use the move command, which is just MV. This will also be the way that you could move a file to a different directory or something like that. But this is going to be what we're gonna to use to actually rename a file. So we do move notes.txt and we'll call it notes2.txt. We'll do ls-l and you can see that it's changed. If you want to actually make a copy of a file, you can use the command called cp, supply the name of the file as the first option, and then supply the name of the copy as the second option. You can see now I have a duplicate of that file. And then last but not least, we're gonna delete notes.to.txt. This is also gonna be the first time that we're gonna see a potential problem with autocomplete. So if I do rm notes, you can see that it only autocompletes notes. Now, notes is not a real file, and it's only doing this because it doesn't know how to finish the autocomplete. So anytime it doesn't complete it, you can click tab a couple times, and it'll show you the different options here. So now you can say, oh, I want to delete notes too. So you type two, hit tab, and it'll finish the autocomplete. Hit enter, and then now it's deleted. Now just to jump back to a previous thing, remember I told you that you can't remove a directory that has files with rmdir, so I'm gonna show you how to remove a directory that has files in it. So I'm gonna make a new directory called, you know, delete me. I'm gonna cd into that directory. I'm gonna to use touch to make a bunch of files. You can see now I have a bunch of files there. And now I'm gonna do cd dot dot to get back to my original directory. So what I want to do now is I want to delete this directory called delete me. So if I do rmdir, delete me, directory not empty. So what I can do now is I can do rm and then I'm going to use an option called dash r. Now keep in mind this is a very dangerous option because what dash r says is it says delete the current file or directory including all files and directories under that and then so on and so forth. The r stands for recursively. The reason this is so dangerous is because if you supply the wrong path Linux is just going to delete it. It's not going to ask questions about it. So now in this case, I can supply delete me and it'll just get rid of the directory as well as all the stuff inside it. So up until now, we've been using the terminal as just a normal user, but there's a second way to use the terminal and it's as an administrator. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to our root directory. So we're just gonna do cd slash, then we'll do ls dash l. And this shows us everything in our root directory. We're now gonna go into the bin directory, which is where a lot of system binaries are. Now I know I didn't go into great detail with this, but suffice to say that these particular files are owned by root and root is going to be a system administrator user. Generally speaking, if you're a user on a Linux system that does not have root privileges, meaning the user is not administrator, then you cannot do anything such as deleting or making new stuff in folders that have root permissions. But there's a very simple solution to this and we call this dropping to root and it's sudo which is super user do, dash s, hit enter. Now, depending on how your system is configured, it may ask you for your password. And if it does, type your password in, and then it'll drop to root. If you get the password incorrect, it won't actually allow you to do that. So you can tell that you've dropped to root because now it says root instead of your name. Now, you can always get back to this by simply typing exit. If you type exit, it'll, it'll exit the root status and go back to your user account. Now be very careful when you're operating as root because root has permissions to do anything on the system to include wipe the entire hard drive, format everything, and do a bunch of other bad stuff. Now it's not strictly necessary to drop to root to do administrative tasks. The other thing you can do is if you wanted to create a new file, but you needed to have administrator permissions to do so, and say that that command was, you know, touch a.txt to make a new file and you're getting permission denied, all you have to do is just add sudo in front of that. And then that will run the following command as an administrator. So just to show you a sample of that, there's a system command called apt and you can supply it update to update the indexes for all of your packages on my particular system. You can see when I do that, it says permission denied. 
Generally speaking in Linux, if you see permission denied, it, the solution pretty much is always to run it as root. So I'm not actually going to drop to root. I'm going to hit the up arrow, which will go back to the previous command. I'm going to click home. I'm going to add sudo to the beginning. I'm going to hit enter, and then now it's going to update fine. And something I forgot to mention is the history. So if you want to see a history of all the commands that you've ran in a given session, simply type the command history, and that will show you everything. You can then scroll up and down from here to look at all the stuff that you've ran. The other way to access history items is to keep hitting the up arrow, and this will just go in order. So and you can even hold it down if you want to go fast. The up arrow is very useful. This is great if you ran a really long command, but it had maybe a problem with it. All you do is just click up just to get the previous command and then fix it and then run it again. The last thing I want to talk about is viewing files that would be ordinarily too large to see on the screen at any given time. So my, my syslog in slash var slash log is 193 kilobytes. If I just do cat on syslog, it's, it's just, it's just too much. And there's only, there's only so far that you can scroll up in your terminal. So you're probably not going to be able to view everything on here. So a better option for this is using a command called ls. And if you run ls and you specify the file that you want to use with ls and you click enter, then you get this. Now what's nice about this is a couple things. This starts at the very top of the file and then it also lets you use page up, page down to navigate up and down this file to see everything that's in it. You can also click the end button to go directly to the end. You can click the home button to go directly home. So this is the primary thing you're going to use if you want to look through a file that's larger than one terminal window. And then once you're all done, all you got to do is just click Q and that will exit you out of it. The last thing I want to talk about for running commands is how you can stop a command from running. This is going to happen occasionally. You might run something that either goes into an infinite loop or takes forever or never turns off. And the way you're going to exit these commands is going to be with control C. So I'm going to run a command that's never going to finish. So I'm going to do cat, and then I'm going to supply dev urandom. What this does is this gives me just a, a stream of random bytes from the Linux kernel. So this is never going to finish. I'm stuck in here. I can't do anything. I hit enter, I hit keys. I'm just, I'm stuck in this, can't do anything. So all I have to do is just click control C a bunch of times until it exits out. And that's it for the video. I hope this was a really light introduction to the Linux command line. This is all some really basic stuff, stuff that you're going to use all the time throughout your career in Linux. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.